Assalamualaikum and hello everyone. In this video, I will share on how to determine the empirical formula of magnesium oxide and copper to oxide. Okay, let's see. We have two methods to determine the empirical formula. Okay, so one is uh, this one, method one. Uh, method one is to determine empirical formula for reactive metal. So, example of reactive metal is magnesium. Okay, normally we use magnesium. And method two is used to determine the empirical formula for less reactive metal. Uh, uh, maybe copper, uh, and we use copper to oxide, or lead, maybe lead to oxide. Okay, so we will see these two experiments to determine the empirical formula. Okay, let's see the first experiment. This is the experiment to determine the empirical formula of magnesium oxide. So, we use magnesium ribbon. And magnesium is a reactive metal. We use method 1, this method. Okay, so we use crucible, uh, pipe clay triangle, um, tripod stand, Bunsen burner with the arrow label and label heat. So, it is a Bunsen burner. And crucible and it lead. Okay, so when you first hit the magnesium ribbon, is without the uh, the lead. Okay, once the magnesium ribbon burns, then you immediately cover the crucible. Uh, why? To to prevent the uh, film the white film from escape from the crucible. Uh, and then, uh, during the heating, once in a while, you open the crucible to allow the oxygen to enter the crucible to support to support combustion. Okay. Then, after the magnesium ribbon, magnesium color is uh, gray. Then it changed to white. So, the reaction is uh, uh, done and then you stop heating. Okay, let the magnesium to cool. After the magnesium and crucible cool, then you wait the uh, crucible and magnesium and lead. Okay, so how do you determine whether the magnesium is completely react? Okay, so we carry out this process. Yeah? Repeat the process of heating cooling and weighing until a constant mass is obtained. And so you repeat these three process, heating, cooling and weighing until a constant mass is obtained. Why do you carry out this uh, step? To ensure that magnesium is completely react. Okay. So, this is the experiment to de determine the empirical formula for reactive metal, for example, magnesium. Okay, the second method, this method is to determine the empirical formula for less reactive metal. Uh, less reactive metal, uh, maybe copper, you can use copper and lead. Okay, so you use oxide of metal. Uh, not the pure metal, oxide of metal. Okay, so uh, this experiment can be uh, divided into three parts. Eh? Part A, part B, and part C. Okay, part A. Part A is the uh, where you produce hydrogen gas. Eh? The reaction that produces hydrogen gas. So, we can use zinc here and hydrochloric acid here. You can use metal and acid. Okay. Look at the position of diesel funnel and delivery tube. And the position of diesel funnel and delivery tube. Okay. So when zinc react with hydrochloric acid, zinc react with hydrochloric acid, it will produce zinc chloride. It will remain in the uh, round bottom flask or flat bottom flask. And produce hydrogen gas. So hydrogen gas will flow through the 
delivery tube. Okay, and then go to part B. Part B where you have a YouTube there with X. What is X? X is anhydrous calcium chloride. Okay. Anhydrous calcium chloride, the function is to absorb moisture uh, from hydrogen gas. To absorb moisture or to dry hydrogen gas. And then the dry hydrogen gas will flow to the combustion tube in part C. In part C is the main part of the uh, this experiment to determine the empirical formula. Okay, so you have combustion tube there with a hole at the end of the combustion tube. Yeah. Okay. So for a few minutes, you let the let the hydrogen gas to flow uh, inside to flow into the combustion tube uh, for a few minutes. Then you take a sample of hydrogen gas there and check uh, whether there is air or not inside the combustion tube. So how do you make how do you ensure that there is no air in the combustion tube? So you bring a, a glowing wooden splinter sorry the a burning wooden splinter and put into the mouth of the uh, test tube if there is a pop sound that if there is pop sound is heard means there is air in the combustion tube so you repeat the process uh, let the hydrogen gas flow inside the combustion tube okay and then collect a sample and repeat the process. Uh, you test the gas with burning wooden splinter. Bring the burning wooden splinter into the uh, mouth of the test tube. If until there is no pop sound is heard, no pop sound. No pop sound means there is no air in the combustion tube. Okay. Once there is no pop sound uh, produced, then you start heating. You start heat the uh, oxide metal. Okay, if the oxide metal is copper to oxide, CuO, so the color is brown. Okay, then you heat. How do you know that the uh, copper to oxide has been react reacted? Huh? So now is copper to oxide react with hydrogen gas. So what happened is it will produce copper and water so we know that the color of copper is brown uh, so when black solid turns to brown means the reaction is already occur uh, but how do you ensure that the copper to oxide is completely react to form copper uh, so again you repeat the three process Heating, cooling, and weighing until a constant mass is obtained. Okay. So, there's two um, observations in this experiment. One is black solid turns to brown. And another one you'll see at the end of the combustion tube, you'll see a colorless droplet. A colorless droplet. What is the colorless droplet? It is water. How do you verify the water? Huh? By using cobalt chloride paper. Huh? Cobalt chloride paper. Uh, the blue cobalt chloride paper will turn pink. Indicates there's water. The colorless droplet is water. So this is the experiment to determine the empirical formula for less reactive metal. Okay. Okay, other thing that students should know in the topic empirical formula is the meaning of empirical formula. So, empirical formula is a chemical formula. Don't forget the word eh? chemical formula that shows the simplest whole number ratio of atoms of each element in a compound. Okay, for example, we have one question here. A compound of magnesium nitride contains 72% of magnesium and 28% of nitrogen. What is the empirical formula of magnesium nitride? So, how do you answer this type of question? 
Okay. Normally, we draw a table. Okay, list element. So, the element you have here is magnesium. Okay, so magnesium here. And nitrogen. Magnesium nitride. Okay, magnesium and nitrogen. Given in the question, the percentage of magnesium is 72%. So, you just write the mass of magnesium is 72%. You assume that the mass of magnesium nitride is 100 gram. So, 72% of 100 gram is 72 gram. Okay, and the mass of nitrogen is 28. Okay, then next step is, you calculate the number of mole of magnesium. So, 72 divided by 24. Okay. And the nitrogen, 28 divided by 14. Okay. So, you get here 3 mole. And nitrogen, 2 equals to 2 mole. Okay. So, ratio is 3 is to 2. Simplest ratio is 3 is to 2. So, the empirical formula of magnesium nitride not 3 is to 2, that one is the ratio, the empirical formula is the formula, is the chemical formula. So, it's Mg, 3, and 2. Okay. Empirical formula of magnesium nitride is Mg, 3, nitrogen, 2. Okay. So, that's all for this video. Hope students can understand the explanation given in this video. See you on next video. Bye!